Hi, everybody. All right. Well, it is still September 8. Unbelievable what is going on in our world. It is so remarkably evil. It's evil. Uh, oh, well, one thing I can say about evil, if you don't fight and push evil back, man, it will spread like fire and capture everyone in its path. Can you fight it alone? No. It's got to be fought with an awful lot of people. And, well, that seems to be our problem. All right, I'm going to pass on some information, uh, but I'm going to be getting to the view. That That's what I... I, I look... <laughs> the view the ladies on the view and high impact flicks video well you'll just see that at the end but here I was uh, this was linked below one of my videos that's it we're leaving all Bahamian evacuees evacuees without a visa taken off the Bahamians who remain are in shock. No one understands why the rule was changed at the last minute. The parents and kids now stuck on the island. Rules changing at the last minute. What's going on? What do you think about this? I think this is terrible. I think they should allow everyone to come into the U.S. They originally said that they could come without a police record and without a visa, and now they're taking that back. That's really ridiculous. That's How awful. many people do you think had to get off, did you see? They said 130 people had to come off. 130 people had to come off the ship tonight. And now we leave? Uh, now we're leaving them, and uh, it's only like 200 people on the boat now. These people they're real refugees they should be allowed into the united states okay uh, well i guess the bahamian government decided to change the rule at the last moment you finally get some hope you know you're you're a parent with children finally you're going to get to a safe place where you can provide for your children. And then at the last minute, you're just yanked off. Wow, man, the psychological trauma of everything that is going on there is just staggering. Staggering. Oh, here, but Sean Connery. Sean Connery? Oh, boy. Do I not like this? these articles? We weren't taking any chances. Sean Connery says he is lucky to have escaped unharmed at his luxury mansion in the Bahamas, where he was prepared for Hurricane Dorian, which may very well have killed thousands. Because the articles, 70,000, that, I guess, was the population, 70,000 homeless. Um, and there was a video with a woman talking about that they had, I don't know, sent in water for 62,000 or something. I don't know. But the, the numbers were not matching up. So, Sean Connery. Wow. 89. He just celebrated his 89th birthday. Boy, that guy, he prepared for it. He did, oh wait, no. He actually got his staff to prepare, but the storm largely avoided Connery's Island. Torrential rain, heavy winds, some trees were knocked down. We were lucky compared to many others, and the damage here was not great. We had been prepared for the storm Everything was ready in advance. We weren't taking any chances and knew what to do. The former 007 actor who celebrated his 89th birthday on the island had hurricane experienced staff. 
who helped him to make preparations. They would, they would have barricaded him and his wife in the home, secured the windows, moved all garden furniture inside. You know, I, I these people disgust me. They just disgust me. They live in their mansions, plural, plural. They help no one. I can't imagine having the kind of money that these people have and living the lifestyle that they live. I, 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 don't, I don't get that. Sir Sean moved to the Bahamas in the 1990s, owns a mansion in Lyford Cay, an exclusive gated community on New Proven Providence, 90 miles from Great Abaco. Abaco? Jesus. So, did Sean do anything to help people? Nothing mentioned in this article. Nothing mentioned in this article. So people are desperate for help, for food, for water, for shelter, for assistance. Nothing mentioned about this guy helping all of those people. Yes, his exclusive gated community where he has staff, hurricane experienced staff. 70,000 people in immediate need of life-saving assistance. Water, food, shelter, accommodation. My God. Where is the queen? Huh? Where are these people that have, that could help so many people without, they wouldn't even notice that the money is gone? It's really, we have a serious, serious problem, you know, and because these people are famous, they're put on pedestals. They're put on pedestals for no reason, just because they're famous and rich. You know, and a uh, subscriber left a very good point underneath my last video. You know, and she's made me question this looting. Is it looting or are people trying to survive? <sighs> we don't know. But I'm sure a lot of people are trying to survive and they might be put in the category as a looter. Look at this. This is Sean Connery's view. Isn't it a lovely sunset? A toxic sunset. The island has been rendered uninhabitable. All right. Well, okay. This I saw yesterday. U.S. waives human rights conditions to release 1.3 billion in military, military aid to Sisi's Egypt. What? Do you know what happened after that Arab Spring? I wonder if anybody knows. It's a military dictatorship now. So, yeah, okay. All right, I'm gonna say it again. Um, we've had massive destruction here in the United States virtually every single day. People losing their homes, losing their farms, nowhere to go, and very limited resources to access. But we're still giving billions to Israel, billions to Egypt. Oh, right. And Trump actually recently, I think, said something about reducing the amount of foreign aid to countries. Do you think they're going to reduce aid to Egypt and Israel. Why? Why 1.3 billion? 
Egypt and Israel get the largest amount, like 75% of foreign aid go to two countries? Really? Why? Ah, Israel's agreement with Egypt, that peace agreement. And it's quite strategic for Israel. So once again, billions going out, US aid, and where's the help for all of those farmers? Oh, right, that bailout, yeah. How many bailouts went to the farmers? I think two or maybe three. Ah, uh, yes, Trump, he's so good. He's just so good to those farmers. And I posted a video on where that money is going. Not going to the farmers in real need, no. It goes to lobbyists, it's going to lawyers, it's going to city slickers who are not working any farm. Yeah. But Trump is great and he's making America great again. So yeah, Egypt, man. Hmm. How we love our dictators. It's it, it, what they have been doing recently in Egypt. Oh, authorities have presented no legal reason or evidence to justify this man's detention. They're locking people up. BDS, BDS, and BDS Egypt is calling for the immediate release of its general coordinator, Rami Shath. I'm not sure if I pronounced his name right. I'm sure I haven't, but this guy, 48 years old, arrested by state security as part of the so-called HOPE case. Yeah, you know, that, oh, what was it? The HOPE thing of Obama. HOPE and something else, I can't even remember. Yes, we can. HOPE. HOPE. The hopiness of people. The HOPE case in which many journalists and politicians have been detained supposedly for assisting terrorist organizations. This is coming right here. Do you think Trump cares that this is going on in Egypt? Of course he doesn't, because he's a lying sack of shit. Uh, just like, you know, the last guy, and just like the last guy before him, and well, you know, it just goes on and on. Beginning in late June, targeted alleged supporters of Muslim Brotherhood the party of President Mohamed Morsi. Morsi, the first democratically elected president, hmm, died in detention in June, six years after being ousted in a military coup. Ah, uh, that Arab Spring, and everybody was like, yay, yay, Egypt, get rid of your dictator, you're gonna be free. Like Libya. Sudan, Syria, all of those places that are going under, that have gone under, more to come. Um, but Americans love their lies. The latest wave of arrests targeting critics, opposition leaders, activists, journalists, under the guise of counterterrorism as part of the Egyptian authorities' systematic per persecution and brutal crackdown on anyone who dares to criticize them. In fact, did you know that an American is sitting in jail? Oh, not just one. Americans thrown in jail in Egypt. Trump, well, it was Pompeo, actually. It was, yeah, good old Pompeo. Let's see. Uh, U.S. military aid to Egypt was set to expire September 30 without the crucial waiver, love those waivers, in a memo sent to Congress and obtained by Al Monitor, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo waived human rights conditions that apply to 300 million in U.S. aid, calling the Arab nation important to the national security interests of the United States, providing access to the Suez Canal 
overflight rites and fighting terror in the Sinai Desert and along its borders with Libya and Sudan, and it could have something to do with Israel. Yeah, I'd say so. Man. Man, oh man. Yeah, I like this tweet. Dan Cohen. Remember this the next time the State Department blathers about human rights violations in Venezuela, Iran, or any other officially designated enemy country. Remember it. So, has Trump come out and asked for the release of a, a woman who lives in Pennsylvania? All right. Uh, here, the case of Reem Mohammed uh, Des Desorki, Desorki. I, I'm really bad with names, I'm sorry. But she arrived from Washington last month with her 13-year-old son. Egyptian authorities detained them at the airport. They confiscated their phones, interrogated Desorski. Desowski. I I'm so bad. I don't know. I've always been, though. Can't blame that on frequencies. Uh, holding them for two hours, actually three hours, then they jailed her. A Pennsylvania teacher and dual U.S. Egyptian national. Her alleged crime? Uh, criticizing the Egyptian government on Facebook. Yeah. When her brother, Noor, visited her, she, he was also thrown in jail. Her son is staying with relatives in Cairo, hoping that he and his mother can return to Pennsylvania before school begins. I just want my mother back. She didn't do anything wrong. So when was this posted? August 9, 2019. So, Noor, the uncle, what did he do? Well, his alleged crime was bringing his sister a toothbrush, shampoo. He never reemerged from the prison. Now everyone in my family is scared to visit my mom. Other cases of U.S. citizens in Egyptian prisons. Uh, critics say uh, Sissy, Sissy, we'll call him Sissy. That'll get me thrown in jail. Sissy has been emboldened by Trump. The repression has grown since Trump signaled in May 2017 a speech Trump gave in Saudi Arabia that human rights in the Middle East would not be a priority for the White House. In Saudi, he said, we are not here to lecture. We are not here to tell other people how to live, what to do, who to be, or how to worship. How selective we are, huh? Hey, I didn't get any evidence that it was Assad, you know, uh, doing those gas attacks, but I'm bombing Syria anyway. I, I, I don't know what is wrong with Trump supporters who are quote unquote awake. It's scary. So Trump calls to congratulate General Sissy on his re-election, who, you know, it was not a legitimate campaign, but yeah. Security officials demanded both their phones, began scrolling through Dysowski's contacts, photos, videos, social media posts. Ah, that's what we're doing here. They asked them questions such as why they came to Egypt, about her social media activity. They asked my mother if she liked Sissy or Morsi, and she didn't want to reply. She knew she would go straight to prison. Well, she did anyway. All righty. Fabulous. Give that country 1.3 billion. <sighs> yeah. 
here in Hong Kong. How many of you feel like crying <laughs> listening to that? It's amazing what music can do. It evokes so much feeling and uh, I think I'll post the other stuff another time. We were the hope. Of the world. Maybe those in Hong Kong don't know <laughs> what's going on here. We, we really were that beacon of hope. Well, something has gone terribly wrong. I, I think many of you would agree.